Hi, I'm Indra Adnan from The Alternative UK, and I'm going to describe to you uh, what is and how to build a citizens' action network. So I'm just going to quickly share a PowerPoint with you. Here we go. So what is a citizens' action network? Uh, most importantly, we should think about that it's not a quick solution. It's not something that you can bring about in a couple of days, but this is more of a longer term, bigger picture response to the crisis that we're in. So if I was to try and describe the Citizens Action Network, the CAN, how it looks once it's been created, it's a place where any person can go in their local community to participate in the solutions to the multiple crises that we face. And in so doing, find belonging, meaning, agency, maybe get many more of their emotional needs met. Secondly, it's a place where local civil society organizations can collaborate with local, national, and global organizations to provide real creative and effective solutions, all the while prototyping a new democracy. And most important for us, is where we can begin the process of getting the UK to carbon neutral by 2025 without waiting for Westminster to agree. So what problems does a CAN solve? In the two years that we've been doing the alternative, we've really come up against the fact that we know the solutions are out there, but we can't get people connected to them. For some reason, people cannot take up the solutions that are on offer. We need high level, human centered integration of action based solutions with planetary impact. And if that sounds very demanding, at the core of it is a reconnection of the individual human being to the community in which they live and the planet upon which we are constantly making an impact. So, this new axis, if you like, of I, we, and world is core to the design of a citizens action network. So to begin with, we have to move from the current state of affairs of how we see the I, the we and the world to one that is not really new, but really just more real, one that we experience ourselves. So moving, for example, from the idea that is currently at the heart of our politics and of our economy, that the human being is homo economicus, something that primarily has material needs and something that has been enslaved, if you like, to the growth economy. So moving from that idea of the human being to a more complex, biopsychosocial, spiritual, playful human being, we all know that we need security. We need belonging. We need a certain kind of status in our community in order to survive. We certainly need autonomy and privacy. We need meaning and purpose and we need attention and also be able to give attention, the time to give attention to solving uh, the problems and to build relationships with each other. So right at the core of a can is this understanding of the complex needs of human beings. Secondly, together, we don't have power and agency. We don't really have a democracy, if you like. What we have right now is you know, it's just a, a vote every five years. It's a top-down, tail-wagging democracy where really a very small group of people tell all of us how it's going to be, whereas really it should be uh, the other way around. What we need instead is engaged, connected, empowered communities of people who through uh, quality relationship with each other can come to their own ideas of what's needed for the flourishing of their communities and of their families and friends, uh, and be able to co communicate that to governments that are willing to serve. And what's in the middle there is a design for something called a future democracy hub that allow everybody to come into that space and into that conversation at their own speed and on their own terms. This is not something that we can just ask people to do. And of course, at the planetary level, we have to move from the globalized growth economy that we know has been killing the planet 
to what we call more cosmo-local communities, working together in global networks, reconnected to the planet. A cosmo-local is a very fancy word for, for saying that what we can experience and build at the local or municipal level isn't simply what we have in that area. We can draw down from all over the world the ideas, the prototypes, even resources for doing things that we need to do at the local level, but in ways that we can own them and that we can have uh, participation. So just to uh, show you a Citizens Action Network, a CAN, that we've been in the process of designing in uh, the southwest of the UK. So you can see instantly what kinds of things are in a CAN that would meet all of these needs I've been describing. So for the individual, uh, we would have uh, local learning clubs. We would have living rooms where we can meet and discuss and plot together. Uh, we would have maybe you know, dance groups that we could meet. I mean, it's a, it's a wide variety of things that the individual uh, could be attracted to and want to take part in. And then when we're work working together, we could develop local energy hubs, local food hubs, maybe social enterprise uh, clubs and investment hubs. Um, and also on top of that, once we've begun to develop these relationships with each other, a digital network that can carry the quality of those conversations and expand them. And right at the heart, of course, are the people's assemblies and uh, implied is the national level citizens assemblies and a particular focus on the young people of your community, uh, not only because of their sp specific need, it's their future after all that we're talking about, but also because of their, their really uh, specific insights into what it is to be living in this world and what is possible for them. We call them Regeneration A. So how can we actually make a can in three stages? At this point, I've been very evocative and it sounds good, I guess, uh, but how do we actually make it happen? So stage one of the three stages, we describe as the deep hanging out. And that means you have to take time uh, in your community, whether it's a city, town or a region, to really think about who's there. We see it as three, at least three bubbles or three groups of people. There's first of all the usual suspects, and by that I mean, you know, us, the people who are already active and thinking about creating solutions to the problems that we face. Uh, these are the first people that, you know, when you ask around, you'll meet these people who are already active and making themselves known. The second a lot of people is uh, the, those who might share our values, who might want the things we want, but somehow have been excluded from the conversation. There's all sorts of historical and cultural reasons for that. Uh, they're usually quite close by and they're living in houses maybe on your street, but they have not yet been included in the conversation. So these two have a lot of affinity already. And then there's the people who don't want to be in our conversation, who maybe are indifferent to it, it's not their thing, or maybe they don't even share our values. They're not thinking about what we're thinking, they have different sets of needs, they're expressing them in other ways. All of these people are implied by your Citizens Action Network. Unlike the situation where parties would find their tribes and work together within their tribes. The point of a citizens action network is to find ways to connect all of these people. So before you start the process of actually bringing them together, it is a good idea to meet up with the usual suspects and if you like, harness them to help you take the action that you're planning to take and to a large extent they will have already been doing a lot of that work and it's good to work together with them the question to the usual suspects once they come together is are we ready to collaborate better with each other it so often is the case that while we share values and we even share a vision we're all working in silos in the sense we're almost competing for funds we're not really working together and this is very much the first step that has to be taken on find your 
usual suspects. Find the people that are going to be at the core of this whole project who've already committed themselves, but then ask the difficult question, how can we work better together? And instead of thinking about what we need and what we're trying to bring, you know, our solution, think about what the people are going to need from us on their terms. Okay, so the vehicle, the prime vehicle for bringing uh, the Citizens Action Network together, once you've already connected with the usual suspects, it's called the collaboratories. So these occur in the public space. These are there for everyone to see and to join. And it starts with a, you know, a, di a direct, if you like, appeal to those who may share your values, but are currently excluded from your conversation. So the three steps of a collaboratory are the friendly, the inquiry, and the action. And to some extent, they speak for themselves. But the friendly uh, is an open space where you're going to you know, you know, meet people, build relationship, foster trust. The inquiry will take you into another level of relationship with people where together you can think about the future that you all want to take part in. And the third part, the crucial part, is once you have been doing the dreaming and imagining and creating, what kind of action is going to really occur now to move you forward to your goals? So just to go through these steps one by one, the friendly, uh, it's got to be an attractive space above all. Um, you might want to offer food and drink. Uh, you might want to attract people into it through the use of arts. You might want to use viral attractors. You might even want to go door to door. The important thing is that you reach further beyond your usual suspects, that you are trying to connect with people on their terms, listen to what it is that they need, in some cases, even invite them to design the event, um, and then offer them many different entry points. The point, the, the, the aim of the friendly is just that, that people would come to this place, they'd experience something that made them feel good, that gives them some sort of emotional resonance, and will give them, awaken, if you like, the desire to do something together. So here is a South Devon friendly that we held in Plymouth. Uh, you, unless you know the people there, uh, you won't know that this is quite a, a wide selection of people. A lot of people here don't know each other. Some people do, uh, and basically they're having fun. So the stage two of the collaboratory is the inquiry. And for this, we usually take a day. If the friendly was an evening, food and drink, some fun, the inquiry is at least a day, and it may be more than a day, maybe a series of days. And the point is to use the best that you can find, really, in terms of facilitation and good tools for creativity and imagination to get people to dream together. It's not a place where you're going to try to uh, answer the, the problems of the current uh, the current problems of, uh, I don't know, so, you know, social housing or um, the welfare state. It's more a collective dreaming space where you, through using all of these tools and through fostering great conversation, begin to dream of a future that you could all work on together. Because when you have that, suddenly the differences can move into the past because now you have a future that you're trying to co-create. So here's one again that we did, the one that we did in South Devon and Plymouth. On the left, you see a mapping exercise where people are actually placing on the map of South Devon, the things that they imagine could occur. And this, would, this included new transport lines and different kinds of spaces that need to serve different kinds of areas. Uh, it's a very, it's a hands-on uh, physical experience. And on the right, 
uh, was one that we did before in King's Cross in London, and that's a piece of theatre. It looks a bit unfriendly. It was actually a shocking piece of theatre that really uh, enlivened everyone and got them thinking uh, out of the box. So the third stage is the action, and here suddenly you see the proliferation of ideas beginning to land, but also on the right, uh, all the people that we've pulled into the space that can help deliver the resources, uh, and resources not only in terms of uh, funding, but also in terms of uh, ideas and skills that people can share and bring to each other's projects. So uh, I think you recognize the different initiatives in the CAN, uh, but if you think about them um, having access or being co-created with all of these different uh, extraordinary organizations, with the people in the room who may not have any connection until now with these projects and these ideas, but are now reshaping them and uh, in a sense co uh, communicating how their needs are going to get met in this space. So the ongoing collaborat no, so the collaborations are ongoing. The, once the friendly turns into the inquiry and into the action, it's, it, this can take over six months but it doesn't have to wait until one is finished before another one begins. So a new friendly, a new group of 100 to 150 people meeting together, going into an inquiry and going into action. It's a constantly uh, generative process which ends up uh, forming the heart and then the expansion of the Citizens Action Network. But even when you have that, and maybe when you look at that diagram, you can begin to imagine how it looks and feels uh, in your city, how it might look in, in your region. But you have to check, are there still people that we're not connecting to this process? And, and my bet is, is that there will be many, many people who are still not connected to the conversation, the process, or, the, or, or are not yet participating in the action. And this is one of the key and most important phases. This is stage three, if you like, of how to make what you've put together attractive to people who are not interested in your conversation, who continue to be outside of the new network that is being created here. And um, each region or each town or city, each can will find its own way of drawing people in, creating attractors, making themselves irresistible, if you like. But here's one. Uh, a couple that, we have ex that we've come across recently that we think do a very good job. One is the issue of a local currency called Countercoin. And what Countercoin does is it persuades uh, local businesses to give up their access for the Citizen Section Network. And it's converted into, uh, into um, products that can be bought with the Countercoin. And these counter coins are issued to people doing the volunteer work. Very often it's the young people who might be going door to door actually selling the can, uh, or they might be starting projects of their own, uh, who are paid in counter coins. And by, uh, once they've got these coins, they can, they can get free cinema tickets, free transport, sometimes free food. Anyway, direct access to the excess that is being created in that community. Other kinds of um, attractive uh, events, services, learning opportunities, all sorts of stuff that people who are not interested in being together with you might still come into your space because they can see the benefits for themselves. So although um, you can now probably see this Citizens Action Network coming together, you might still be asking the question, well, how does that make a difference in the long run? You know, how does that affect our politics if the council is still doing its own thing? And in a sense, the, the Citizens Action Network, if you're doing your work well, will already be much more than the people that the council is reaching. Only 30%, sometimes 25, sometimes less than 20% of people are regularly voting at council elections. They're not aware of the council. Uh, they, you know, they don't want to participate. They're not thinking about the council at all. But the Citizens Action Network does the bigger job of reaching out beyond that demographic to all the people below the radar of the political parties. 
And once that has happened, you now have the beginnings or the basis of a, a genuine democracy. The citizens are now in communication with each other, co-creating, participating in decision-making. And people from that Citizens Action Network might want to stand for the local council and maybe even if groups of them uh, take over the local council. So a great model for that is what's happened in Froome, where a group of people who used to just have a uh, drink in the pub together, uh, who came from a number of different parties, decided to stand as independents to take over the local council. They presented themselves to the people in the area as we are not representing a national party here with an ideology or a top-down manifesto. We're here to represent you and we'll listen to what you are uh, expressing, how you're expressing your uh, needs in this era, and we'll deliver those. And that, when they came together as the independents for Froome, in the first election they won 12 out of 17 seats, and then the second election they won all 17. And right now uh, there's 21 councils operating in this way, but there's many, many more who are in preparation. So there is a plan to take back political control or political agency, let's call it that, at the local level. And over time, this will begin to affect the national level. Uh, this is uh, something you can learn more about at the Alternative UK. So again, many of you will be thinking, it looks good, I like it, I could get involved, but how do we scale it? And of course, the principle is not scaling, but pattern matching. What you're doing and what you're trying to do in a city that you're living in is also happening in other places. And how do we know that? Because almost every place we've gone to, we've seen a similar set of conditions, which is a group of people who are already connected, the usual suspects, they're already collected to Cosmo Local Solutions. In a sense, the system they're trying to bring into being the one that makes the old one obsolete is already coming into view. There's already people who are not in their conversation who would like to be, and there's always people who are nowhere near their bubbles and not interested in them either. And that pattern, if you like, was the beginning uh, of the concept of the Citizens Action Network. And, it, and the way that we've responded to it can occur in one city after another. It's more to do with fractal pattern matching, where things can copy each other because they recognize each other, than any central body scaling them up. That picture on the right is a complex uh, fractal. It's pretty. So to come back to the initial impetus for doing the Citizens Action Networks, I think this is a place that we can all agree to, that we're in right now. Uh, there's a lot of anxiety about whether or not, while the government continues to fight internally, continues just to oppose, and in effect does nothing for the climate crisis, is it possible that we together as the people can meet the climate window. And I hope that from everything that you've heard today, you would agree with us that yes, we can. So that's it from me. I hope I've made sense. You can always come back to us looking for more clarification. Uh, but until then, Good luck with your Citizens Action Networks and please let us know how you're doing.